No DQ Galaxy, we are live for the NoDQ.com recap of AEW Dynamite for March the 23rd, 2022. This is the first of 13 straight nights of live streaming. Had to wear the Friday the 13th shirt for that very reason. Thank you guys so much for tuning in tonight. I really do appreciate your viewership and support. I hope you stick with me for all 13 nights. I wonder who will actually show up for all 13 nights. That remains to be seen. But chat room, take note of who's in the chat each and every night that I do this stream on NoDQ.com. Anyways, Dynamite. We kicked off the show with the return of CM Punk. First appearance since the Revolution pay-per-view when he defeated MJF in that very brutal, violent, dog collar match. We had CM Punk versus Dax Harwood, so we had a, a good old-fashioned wrestling match here between the two of these guys. Cash Wheeler went to the back, stayed there for a while. Crowd was very much behind CM Punk, although... The announcers did take note that Punk was not 100%. His back was still hurting him from the dog collar match. You had the ass boys, the sons of Billy Gunn, watching at ringside. And they were standing up. They were distracting Harwood, planting the seeds for an upcoming match between FTR and the Gun Club. The two, CM Punk and Harwood, they went back and forth in this match, traded some blows back and forth. Punk tried to hit the flying elbow, but he got crotched, and then Dax hit a big superplex, hit a diving headbutt, but CM Punk kicked out. Both guys ended up on the outside of the ring. Wheeler ran down to check on his tag team partner, tried to rally Harwood to get back into it. Punk put on the Anaconda Vice, but Harwood escaped. And then Harwood hit a springboard powerbomb. CM Punk kicked out of that. And then Harwood put a sharpshooter on Punk. Punk escaped and then got the Anaconda Vice on again. And Harwood at that point had no other choice but to tap out. And then after the match, we had the little setup with the Ass Boys laughing at FTR as Wheeler helped Harwood to the back. And later on, there was a backstage interview with FTR, and Wheeler talked about how the ass boys are still wetting the bed, and Harwood called them a couple of spoiled brats, and a challenge was issued for next week's Dynamite between FTR and the Ass Boys, the Gun Club, whatever you want to call them. Looks like FTR continuing that transition into the babyface role. And Harwood even said that not all the fans are behind them because of the bad things they've done, but at least they are not spoiled brats like the Ass Boys. We had a backstage promo with Chris Jericho and the Jericho Appreciation Society to set up the main event, Jericho and the sports entertainer, Daniel Garcia against Dark Orders, Alex Reynolds and Long John Silver. And there was a photo shown of Silver as a kid getting an autograph, taking a picture with Chris Jericho. And Jericho said he's going to take Johnny Hungy to school and then said that Silver and Reynolds will be future endeavored. We had a wild eight-man tag team match, Texas Tornado style, which means no tags. You could fight anywhere in the building. Sting, Darby Allen, teaming up with the Hardy Boys against Private Party, Butcher, and Blade. Sting did a a dive off the top rope to the outside onto everybody, and the brawl went all over the place. At one point, Andrade took a cheap shot at Darby Allen. It was totally legal in this match, and Butcher threw Darby down this 
this flight of steps going into the concession area. And then the fight continued. Private Party fought with Matt Hardy on the stage, and they they sent Matt off the stage, and the three of them crashed through a table below. And meanwhile, in the concession area, Sting, Darby Allen, and Jeff Hardy worked over Butcher and Blade. Butcher and Blade were laid out on one of the merchandise tables. Jeff Hardy climbed a ladder, and then something totally unique. I mean, we've seen the Swanton bomb many times, but Jeff Hardy managed to climb up and he got on this ledge that was on the side of the wall, way above the concession table. So there was this ledge that Jeff Hardy was standing on and Jeff Hardy hit his big swanton through the tables. Now there was crash pads below boxes, but it still looked really cool. And I've never seen something off of a ledge like that before. Like, did they just notice the ledge in the building? And Jeff's like, I can jump off that. He must have. And Jeff Hardy's crazy, but we all knew that anyways. We had Sting going back to the ring to go after Private Party because they were on the verge of beating Matt Hardy. And Private Party tried to hit the gin and juice, but Sting caught one of them. And I think he was trying to go for the Scorpion Death Drop, but he fell on his ass. He, he bit biffed it. And then they, they managed to recover from that. Sting got him in position. One of the Private Party guys got him in position for the Scorpion Death Drop. And then... You had Matt Hardy with the other member, and they hit the stereo twist of fate, death drops, one, two, three, scored the victory. Fun match here. Very entertaining stuff, as you would expect from these guys in a Texas Tornado match. We had Brian Danielson and John Moxley up against the Varsity Blondes. Blondes got no entrance. You know what that means. You had William Regal on commentary. Pretty much a squash match. Brian hit the running knee to Garrison. Moxie with the paradigm shift to Pillman Jr. And they did the stereo head being kicked in, elbow strikes, double submission. So just like the previous match, stereo moves to pick up the victory. And then afterwards, you had Moxley and Brian on the mic. Well, Moxley pretty much did all of the talking here. Actually, I think he did all of the talking. He put over Regal, and Moxley talked about how being approved by William Regal is a badge of honor, and talked about how there could be some additions to this faction. I guess they're being called the Blackpool Combat Club. And Moxie said, if you go deep down and you, you figure out how to love pain, maybe you could be part of this group. He said that if you want the badge of honor, you have to do it. You have to earn it the hard way. So nice little promo here from Moxley to tease possible future members of this Blackpool Combat Club. We had MJF come to the ring for a promo. He had his security with him, and he said it was a shame that Wardlow could not win the TNT title last week. He said that CM Punk was a beaten man at Revolution, and there will be a rematch. MJF vowed to give Punk his most embarrassing loss ever, and then will attend the funeral of CM Punk and piss on his grave. He then went back to talking about Wardlow, said Wardlow is a greedy little pig. MJF said he made Wardlow, and Wardlow signed a deal with the devil that is ironclad. And then MJF said he is going to strap Wardlow to a cross just like Jesus. 
Man, MJF, he's got some balls. I will say that to make a reference to Jesus in Texas. We all know that MJF is a man that has no filter and will say whatever it takes to get that heel heat. So anyways, Wardlow came down to the ring. He attacked the security guards, but guess what? There was more security and they held him down. And MJF said that he is going to pay Wardlow to stay home until people forget he even exists. So I guess the idea is that Wardlow is iced and MJF is just going to make people forget about Wardlow. I'm a little disappointed that Wardlow just didn't break out. Like I felt it was one of those big show spots coming where all the security guys are on him and he just breaks out and then MJF runs for his life. But no, they didn't do it. Wardlow was held down by the security guards and that's that. We'll see how he, he manages to get himself out of this predicament with MJF. Segment was fine. I, I liked MJF's promo and Warlow coming out there. I just I, I wanted to see him break out of, of that security that security hold down that they had him in. Backstage we had some kind of friction between the best friends. And I guess Wheeler Yuta said that Rather than trying to be a best friend, he's trying to be the best wrestler. They're having some kind of friction. Really don't care one way or another. And then we had Adam Cole versus Jay Lethal. Jay Lethal getting a rare AEW Dynamite appearance. He's usually been featured on Dark, Elevation, Rampage, whatever. Justin Roberts, I guess he's been doing this for a while. I have no idea, but... I, I, I presume so. He he introduces Jay Lethal as being from Elizabeth, New Jersey, and he says Elizabeth in the voice of Randy Savage, which is kind of funny. Anyways, crowd was into both guys. They were doing the dueling chants. Red Dragon showed up. They were watching on the stage, and match went back and forth here. Lethal went for the lethal injection but got hit with a super kick. Adam Cole hit the Panama Sunrise. Jay Lethal kicked out because everybody kicks out of the Panama Sunrise. When was the last time somebody lost clean to the Panama Sunrise? Maybe it happened on Dark or, Ele or Elevation, but I haven't seen it happen. So I, I reckon that nobody's ever kicked out of it. Anyways, Adam Cole went for the boom, but he missed. And then Jay Lethal had Cole in a pinning predicament but then red dragon got on the apron adam cole hit a low blow when the referee wasn't looking hit the boom and got the one two three beating jay lethal no surprise here and then afterwards cole got on the mic said he deserves another title match adam page stole the victory at revolution yada 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 said it was lightning in a bottle and next time they wrestle cole is going to shoved the bottle up his ass, and then he called out Adam Page. Page arrived. He had a belt with him. He started going after all three guys, but eventually Cole, with another low blow, took down Adam Page, the world champ. Three-on-one beatdown. You had Cole leaving with the AEW championship. We'll see where that goes. And segment was fine. I figure they're setting up another match with these two as like something to hold us over until the double or nothing pay-per-view. Walter Cruz with a $2 super chat says lethal needs more credit. That guy can wrestle. Yeah. I mean, he's always been solid going back to TNA. I haven't really seen much of him in years, but the few times I've seen him in AEW, he's, he's really good, but they, they haven't really done much with him. He's just kind of there. And he's doing this stuff with Ring of Honor for their upcoming event. And he might end up being part of the new Ring of Honor as well as AEW. But yeah, guy is really talented. And I'm I'm a little surprised that he, he never got an opportunity in WWE. We had Sammy Guevara and Ty Conti interviewed by Tony Schiavone in the ring. Sammy talked about talked about how no matter what, 
He is going to continue doing these crazy stunts that he does. He wants the people to chant holy shit. And he's heard the critics saying that he cannot do this forever. He said if he's going to pay when he's older, it's all worth it to him. Easy to say now, though. And Ty Conti brought up the whole Paige Van Sant situation. They want some payback. They called out Dan Lambert. Lambert arrived and said that Van Zant wasn't there because she's not going to show up in that shit-stained state known as Texas. And Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page were there, and Lambert asked if they wanted to get in the ring. They were not interested. They walked off. And then Sammy Guevara talked about how they've been living rent-free in Dan Lambert's head. And that's not all because, you know, Dan Lambert has the other TNT title, the second one. And there, there's uh, an image of Dan Lambert kissing the title. And Sammy said that with the things that they, they've been doing, him and Ty Conti in the bedroom with the belt, uh, they are not only living in Lambert's head rent-free, but they're also living in Lambert's mouth as well. So, yeah. And uh, Ty Conti published a photo on Twitter of her and Sammy on the bed with the TNT title. So, yeah, that was pretty amusing. Um, and then we had Layla Hirsch versus Red Velvet. 9.30 spot, you know, last week the women got their spotlight. They got their main event, but now it's back to the 9.30 spot. And Chris Statlander, who is in a feud with Layla Hirsch, she was banned from ringside. And uh, Hirsch went right after Velvet when the match started, but Velvet fought back. They brawled on the outside for a while, and then Hirsch grabbed the turnbuckle link Referee stopped her from using it. The referee went to put it away, and then Hirsch revealed that she had another piece in her trunks. She used it and picked up the win over Red Velvet. And then afterwards, Hirsch put Velvet in her arm submission. Chris Statler ran down to make the save since the match was over. You know, this was okay. Uh, you know, they, they got this feud going on, but not not super invested in it to be totally honest with you guys we had jade cargill backstage why does it seem like jade cargill always just does backstage promos on dynamite like i know she's doing stuff on rampage but i haven't been watching rampage much other than the live shows which are far few and far between but yeah, Jade, I guess, is hyping up that she's going to have a, a real celebration at some point. You got the, the smart Mark guy there with her. And then we had Tony Schiavone on the stage interviewing Thunder Rosa, the new women's champion. Thunder Rosa did not even get a word in. Vicky Guerrero interrupted, did the whole excuse me, said that Thunder Rosa can go back to Mexico. Rosa tried to talk back, and then that's when... Nyla Rose attacked Thunder Rosa from behind and laid her out. So I guess I guess uh, Nyla Rose is the first heel that will be fed to Thunder Rosa, which is which is fine. But I was a little disappointed here. I was hoping Thunder Rosa would have gotten like a nice lengthy promo with the fans just to talk to them and thank them and you know have a nice follow up to her title win. And I felt that this was just kind of a throwaway segment. I felt like they could have done something and let, let Thunder Rosa speak from the heart or say something about her win, which we didn't get. So yeah, that was a little bit of a letdown. And then we had the main event. We had John Silver and Alex Reynolds of the Dark Order going up against Chris Jericho and the sports entertainer, Daniel Garcia. Jericho and Silver were doing some trash talking back and forth. Jericho pie-faced Silver, and Silver went right after Jericho. And then Jericho on the outside uh, acted like he was attacked by the other Dark Order guys, five or ten, whatever his name is, and one of the other guys. 
and uh, the referee believed Jericho, so they they were kicked out. The Dark Order guys were kicked out from ringside, even though they did not attack Chris Jericho. Colin Andrew loves this Chris Jericho. I just don't think he should be coming out to Judas. And one of the 2.0 guys... Okay, so for a while, I was trying to remember the 2.0 names for the longest time since they've been in AEW. Matt Lee, Trey Parker. No, that's the South Park guy. Um, and now they've changed their name, so it's Matt Gerard or something. I don't even know. Now i got to figure out what the new names are. I was just starting to try and figure out what the new names were, and now their names are different. But anyways, the, the one guy from 2.0 was saying that there should not be any singing, no Judas. And I agree with him. I'm 100% with him. Like, if these guys are going to be heels, you got to get rid of Judas. Like, use one of Jericho's other songs. Uh, use one of his new singles or something like that uh, just to change things up a little bit. Anyways, uh, match was pretty standard. John Silver made a big comeback, was taking out all of the, the Jericho appreciation guys and got a couple near falls on Jericho. Uh, but then the, the JAS guys got on the apron and Silver took them off the apron and then Silver went after Hager, but got slammed on the mat by Hager or on the on the floor mat when the referee wasn't looking. And then again, the referee was distracted. Jericho hit Reynolds in the back with Floyd the baseball bat. And then Garcia put on the submission. Easy, easy victory from this point. It was academic, as JR might say. And Alex Reynolds tapped out. And that was the end of the show, man. Uh, kind of a flat ending, in my opinion. You know, it was just a, a standard tag match. No big angle at the end. No cliffhanger for next week. You know, just Jericho's guys won a match with Dirty Tactics. And that was the end. So I felt like the end of Dynamite was a little a little uh, anticlimactic. And the second hour was okay. The first hour was way better, in my opinion. You had a couple really good matches. Loved the, the eight-man tag. and. CM Punk and Dax Harwood was pretty solid. But yeah, the second hour was just kind of meh, kind of skippable in my opinion. So if I balance it out, you know, I I, I would say this show is a somewhat recommend, but a lot of it I think was skippable. So I'd, I'd probably go with a, a B or a B minus even for this show. Uh, you know, after last week, it, it, it definitely felt like a bit of a cool down. And we do get these dynamites. Uh, not every week can be all guns a blazing. They they do slow it down a little bit. This was one of those slower dynamites. You know, they got got some time now until the next pay per view, and they don't have any big specials coming up. I don't think for a couple of weeks. So yeah, it was it was it was just an okay show by dynamite standards. Walter Cruz sent in a five dollar super chat. Thank you, Walter. He says, if Jericho is a heel, change Judas. I mean, he keeps kayfabe when heels don't like his merch. Change it or play the beginning, then stop when the crowds start. I like that, but they'll just keep they'll keep singing. If you cut off the music, they'll keep singing anyways. I think I think you should just change his music. If he's gonna be a heel, then go all the way with it. And hey, Jericho can build up another song, you know promote a new song and, and get some Spotify plays on a new Jericho song or play something from his new album. Seems to me like it would be a good idea to change it up. Look what Edge did. Edge got got rid of the Alter Bridge song and replaced it with a, a different Alter Bridge song that is, is more fitting with his heel character. And maybe Jericho could do the same thing, although then people would say that they're copying Edge in WWE. So not sure if they're going to do that. And I agree with City by the Bay. Highlight of the show was the eight-man tag with the Hardy Boys. And poor Sting, he he botched the, the Scorpion death drop attempt at first. But other than that, that was a really fun match. So that's it for Dynamite. Night one of 13 nights in the books. And if you guys would like to support the site, right now there is a 25% sale on nodq.com slash merch. You can pick up NoDQ.com merchandise, T-shirts, mugs, hats, 
and stickers, all sorts of merchandise over at nodq.com merch. Use the code MANIA to get 25% off, and that code is good through the Raw after WrestleMania. You got plenty of time. Feel free to support the site that way, or just tell a friend. Share a link to this video on social media, and stay tuned for more. We got a lot more live streams coming up on the channel. I hope you guys enjoy the content coming up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Stay tuned to NoDQ.com for the very latest. Take care, everybody. Have a great night. And remember, say yes to NoDQ.com. See you guys next time.